What's up, YouTube? My name's Chase. I'm an incoming MS1 for this uh, fall 2023 class. And today I'm gonna give you guys my application timeline for this past cycle. Um, so real quickly, we'll go over just this basic timeline right here since mine's pretty short. And then after that, we can flip to the med schools that I applied to and I will show you all the ones that I applied, when I applied, when I did the secondaries, when I was accepted or rejected. So without further ado, let's get into it. All right, so to start out, the first point right here we have is May 14th. That is when I took my MCAT so that it would not delay my application. By the time I got secondaries in, I would have known my MCAT score. That way I could change the schools that I applied to, that sort of thing in the AMCAS app. Okay, so secondly, on May 31st, that is when I actually submitted my AMCAS application. That was, I believe the first day it came out. So I did it at noon, which you can see in my full application of the AMCAS. But anyways, it didn't delay anything. I was processed by the 3rd of June by submitting it then, so that was that. That allowed me to get secondary super early, which you'll see on the timeline. I started getting them um, June 28th, which was pretty quick for me because I had just finished the MCAT. I took the Casper test. I had just gotten my application fully done, and I actually did not pre-write any of 30 plus secondaries, which was not something I would recommend. So anyways, those started rolling in. Um, started completing those and then I also finished up my last summer course which was um, officially complete June 31st so that finalized my GPA which was a 396 science a 3.97 all other all right so by the time August 7th had rolled around I finished every secondary now the vast majority I did get back within two weeks but I think Duke was my last secondary which was submitted August 7th and that was just because they had no rolling admissions and a super long application that I did not want to put in front of getting others back in time. Shortly after, um, August 15th is when I got my first interview. Um, I got that interview to the University of Utah and I believe it was their first interview day, which is what they said when I actually went to interview. Um, it was an all virtual MMI interview. I absolutely loved it. I thought it was awesome. Um, I really think the MMI interview is like better than the traditional interview. I was skeptical at first, but I feel like I was able to show the way that I thought through problems so well in the MMI. Like I think the traditional where it's like, tell me about a time where you overcame a problem or a challenge is like the worst way to see how people overcame a problem or a challenge. But putting someone in like a hypothetical situation and seeing them think through it on the fly was one of like the best ways to interview ever. So I'm like big team MMI without a doubt. Um, so between August 15th and October 26th, I heard nothing. I got put on hold at UC San Diego, um, put on hold at actually like a ton of different places. It was like, here, we didn't reject you, but we're not quite going to give you an interview yet. Um, so I didn't really keep track of those, but, um, anyways, uh, we get to October 26th and that was the day I was accepted to the University of Utah, which was such a weight off the shoulder because as you can see on this timeline, I did not get a single other interview the entire cycle as of today is what? April 4th. I think I've been rejected from every school now, but I did not get a single other interview. So it was an early interview and then a fairly early acceptance, which was nice because it allowed me to not be absolutely stressed out on SDN 24 hours a day, all day long. Um, so that is where I'm going this next year is the University of Utah. Go Utes, I'm super stoked. I just finished their second day look and it was like phenomenal. Um, I really liked the people I saw there. The faculty was great. Um, we actually got like 25 of us and we went to a brewery after um, our second look day. And then I've been skiing a few times since uh, this winter is never ending out here with several of my new classmates. So I am absolutely stoked to be attending there. Um, so yeah, that's the quick and dirty timeline. Now I'm gonna cut to the schools that I applied to so we can kind of go through that if you are interested. All right, so this is the spreadsheet that I had. Um, it's basically the copied and pasted section from Med School Coach, which is the company I used for um, application prep and interview prep. Realistically, I'm not sure if I would recommend using them for your application prep. Um, I really liked having an advisor since my school did not really do advising um, at all. So it was nice to be able to talk to somebody and whatnot, but I think realistically, you can find pretty much all the information on YouTube. And we didn't do the best job of selecting schools like that I would not get screened out of, A, 
and B, that were just like a really good fit. Like a couple of them, like um, Rosalind Franklin, for example, I now know after hours of SDN that they really like non-clinical volunteering. And that was probably the worst portion of my application. As you guys would have seen in my application video, I had less than 150 hours of non-clinical. So some of these schools in here, I probably should not have applied to in hindsight. But as you can see, there's a lot of them. Um, it was like, I think I completed 31 secondaries, um, which was a lot. But we'll just go through real quick um, if you're interested. So I applied to Albany, FAU, Rosalind Franklin, Drexel, Duke, Emory, Dartmouth, GW, Georgetown, Harvard, Temple, Loyola, um, Medical College of Georgia. I actually did not complete their secondary. Those are the ones that are in gray. Um, I did that because they required a stats course. And even though I'm from Atlanta, grew up there, graduated high school, I emailed their admissions and they're like, ha, you're out of state. And they only take four out of state kids. So I did not end up submitting that secondary. Um, then I applied to Medical College of Wisconsin, NYU Long Island, Nova, MD, Penn State, Vermont, Rush, Sydney Kimmel, Utah, Tufts, Tulane, UCLA, Arizona, UCLA. Um, again, I did not know the difference between the Drew and the regular one, so I applied to both. Um, and I ended up not actually doing either. I did the secondary for UCLA, but I did not know they required a preview test and my application would have been so late by the time I realized it that I was like, um, we're just not gonna deal with another $100 test for no reason. Um, applied to San Diego, um, UCF, Kansas I didn't do because I like submitted the primary because I wanted to do it all like really quick. Didn't realize their out-of-state acceptance was low, so I never did their secondary. Um, Miami Miller, that one kind of stings. That was like a ridiculously long secondary I poured my heart and soul into, and they didn't even score my application. So I should have lit that 120 or whatever dollars it was on fire. Um, UVA, I applied to USF, Virginia Commonwealth, Virginia Tech, Wake Forest, and that's it. So there's a lot of them. And as you can see, I got my secondaries rolling in on like the, the 28th, as we spoke about in the last video, was the first one. Um, depends on the school as to when I got it back. Georgetown really didn't like their secondary. It was a whole lot of, um, of stuff that I just didn't really resonate with. And it took me for, that one was like a month to get back. So I was expecting that rejection, which ironically I think was my first rejection. So had that one coming. But like GW, for example, got it back close to two weeks. Dartmouth, two weeks. Emory, back in two days. Duke was obviously the latest one, as I talked about earlier. Drexel, super early. Um, Chicago was a little bit later. Um, FAU, I got that one back within five days. Albany got back quick. Um, Utah, as you can see, I got back within like three days. So that was good. I knew that was my state school. That was my best chance. So I made sure to get that one in like super quickly. Um, if you have any specific questions about secondaries or pre-writing, feel free to leave a comment or message me on Instagram. Um, I will absolutely respond to you. Um, Tulane, I got back super quick because I knew that they got a ton of applications. Um, same with like most of the schools I was like really diehard wanting to go to. Like Arizona, I knew a lot of people that got interviews there, so I applied to that one quickly. Um, Miami Miller, I knew that one was quick, so I did that like eight page long one in three days. Still a little bit hurt about that. UVA, I got back within a week. I really wanted to go there too. And then, yeah, Emory, I got back really quick too. So anyways, that is all the schools I applied to. Obviously the ones in red were the ones I got rejected to quickly. The rest of which I have now received rejections for, but a really big red board would be kind of depressing. Um, but all that matters guys is that you get the one acceptance and you will be a med student. Um, so don't worry if you apply to a ton and you're on wait lists or whatnot. It only takes one, one guys. Um, I applied to 31 with pretty good stats, as you could tell, um, fairly good um, CV overall. I was expecting uh, more, but I'm so stoked to be in with one. And it's the school I wanted to go to. Um, I get to stay here, enjoy the outdoors with my dog. It's super sick. The class is awesome. The faculty are great. And I am so excited to start in the fall. Um, but if you guys have any other questions about application, applying, any of that stuff, let me know in the comments below or send me a message on YouTube and I will get back with you. See you guys.